Welcome to Insomniac Live. My name is James Stevenson. Here with a couple great guests, both animators here at Insomniac Games. I've got James Hamm and Lindsay Thompson. And we're going to be playing some of Naughty Dog's Uncharted The Last Legacy on this Monday fun day. Wait, that's not right, is it? It's case of the Mondays. <laughs> case of the Mondays. Monday's not a fun day at all. Um, so yeah, hello chat. How you doing? How was your weekend? Um, James, Lindsay, welcome. Hi. Thank you. Uh, so both big Uncharted. James, you worked at Naughty Dog for a yes. little bit, right? Yep. Worked on um, Uncharted 4. Helped finish that game off. Cool, but you didn't work on this one? No. Have you played it yet? No. So you haven't played time. it yet? All right. And Lindsay... You're a giant Uncharted fan. I'm a big Uncharted fan. That's it's the bulk majority of video games I play. Is Uncharted games. <laughs> uh, it's the, it's one, some of the few games that I've actually played from start to finish. Uh, and um, I haven't played this either. I'm a big fan. I'm very excited. Well, we're starting right from the beginning for you and everyone in chat. Uh, if you haven't played this, we're starting from the beginning, so no super late spoilers. I will. I have played this game entirely, and it is amazing. And it ends on a super super high note. Um, but uh, the whole game is great too. Uh, right off the bat, A Pearson ninety one ninety eight and Joey LD ninety seven. Thank you for the follow. Appreciate that very very much. And uh, if you click that follow button, we do shows roughly three days a week. Have a great week coming up. Wednesday we're gonna be playing some Sunset Overdrive uh, with the DLC. We're even bringing in the final boss of the DLC as a special guest. Uh, Brandon Winfrey will be here and then on Friday we're gonna play some Super Mario Odyssey which comes out that day on Nintendo Switch and Xenoverse Gamers thank you for the follow so uh, first thing about this game there, there's no Nathan Drake oh yeah I anticipated that yep you anticipated it I haven't finished Uncharted 4 I I, I think I'm really close to the end of it but I so I, do, I don't know if this is like a continuation Sequel. I, I haven't really looked much into it besides the trailer, so. So you anticipated Drake. Why, so why did you? I anticipated him not being in it because I'd heard enough about it that it was like kind of a supplement and it was about the two gals and. Uh, that it very much is. Yes. Yeah. So. What was it for you guys? I mean, games you worked at, not Dark, but what was it about Uncharted? Um, what. What do you guys love the most about Uncharted? And uh, I think especially both of you are animators, so um, talk about a game that just has not just sensational animation, but a ton of animation in it, yeah. like just a lot. Yeah. Um, initially, like this was actually one of the games that made me want to get in this field. And I played the first one, played the demo of the first one because I couldn't afford the first one. So I played the demo multiple times. Mm -hmm. And just the way it looked, just the environment, the atmosphere was just amazing. And then the adventure of it just the uh, just the adventure of everything about the game finding all the hidden okay. secrets and treasures was just captivating to me mm. so it just further my interest into it but it's yeah. been amazing for me yeah for me when I first saw I think I, I uh, first saw Uncharted 2 and I was um, for me as kind of a casual gamer I'd never been sucked into something so quickly because it was so story driven and it was it was like watching an exciting movie that you just wanted to see what happened next and obviously you know the landscapes and the animation and the quality um is in the kind of the seamless uh nature of the gameplay is, was so appealing to me so um i was just yeah i was just drawn to to the adventure of it as well yeah it was just such a such a cool it was unlike anything i'd ever seen the Nerdazoid, thank you for the follow. Um, Anastasia2458 says, I have no idea what this game or franchise is about. Um, how would you guys describe, what would you, if you said, if someone said, I don't know anything about Uncharted, what would you tell them? I always tell people it's like, um, it's like playing a, a game version of Indiana Jones. Indiana Jones, yep. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's an action adventure game. Um, everyone is different, he's a treasure hunter, there's, puzzles and plenty of interesting characters to learn yeah. about and their backstories and connecting the dots and really really great story and just so beautiful yeah you're finding treasures everywhere there's lots of like crazy traversal and like climbing stuff there's yeah. the, all these cinematic little moments there's giant set pieces I mean if you think about like all the great things in Indiana Jones from like like these trap 
temples, you know, hi hiding artifacts to like chasing people down and moving vehicles to you know gunfights and fist fights and yeah. um, and then intrigue and character moments like it has all of it like it's just I am um, it. it's something that I always uh, I feel like as animators that we talk about if, if anybody from Naughty Dog is watching uh, very impressed by the finger animation I'm always yeah. looking at the fingers in this game <laughs> because it's something that you can really run out of time when you're working on a game and you know you, you, you make it look as good as you can but I there was a there was a cutscene that I think was just an optional little quest moment in Uncharted Four where Nathan was talking to his brother, and one of them was holding a cup, and I just remember just staring at the the fingers. They were you know they were like squishing on the cup and moving, and I was like, oh, it's I, I, as an animator maybe I stare at those things more than other people, but more than we should because yeah. like you, that was when I first started working on Uncharted Four. I came in at the very end of it, yeah. go, so go, I go. ended up trying to do a lot of finger animation, and it was constant checks of, does it look right? No. Yeah. Go back. Review. But it came out great. And oh, it's yeah. Just always just I, know, I noticed it, so, you know. So, yeah, there, I mean, it, and that's, I think, one of those, like, little things that, like, helps push you out of that uncanny valley when, like, the fingers are right, because it's just one of the giveaways that yeah. someone isn't real if the fingers hey, aren't there. Hey, I know, Sean. 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 Yep. Sean and um, if Sean's out there or anyone that knows Sean, tell him I said, shut up, Sean. <laughs> He'll get that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, even like this, this is beautiful. It's like gorgeous. the composition of this shot, like you got the little flies, like just the polish across the board, like the lighting, like it's just perfect. So now we're in the middle of a war zone uh, and we're trying to find this red door. Um, right. Look at those fingers. Red door. Right. Um, <laughs> so Nico oh. ninety two said, "Has Uncharted influenced Spider Man in any way, like the incredible animations?" So first, I will say we aren't talking a ton about Spider Man, uh, just because you know we'll get to Spider Man when it's time. But I think obviously we would be silly not to like want to sure. raise our game to like the you know like hit the level of you know when you're talking about realistic characters in a world, you're yeah. you know. They set the bar, and so that's like a bar, you know, you want to try and hit or exceed. Um, yeah, well. we're, I mean, we're obviously, a lot of us are big fans of the Uncharted series, and we're, we take inspiration from lots of different games, and just from an animation standpoint, the quality is really great, and we're definitely inspired by that. Uh, let's see, what else is there? Like those little moments, like that little family that just ran in, that's yeah, so cool. You know, these little, these little vignettes that you come across, it's very cool. Yeah, maybe go the other way. Yeah, those I mean, I guys don't want you to come in. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. oh, yeah. That's why I wanted to watch. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's probably more to that there. <laughs> now I know why I'm not going that way. So. Sonic Disturbed 2 says, Nathan Drake is the best and most likable video game character ever. Well, yeah, that's, some, that's up there. Yes, yeah, that's he amazing. is. He's very charming. Uh, he, he certainly is. he certainly has to be in that discussion. That's all perspective because I like I like Kratos. So no, I think he's more like a <laughs> he's, he's more likable and charming. Very absolutely, charming. he's like ripping someone's head off. <laughs> as charming as it gets. This old Kratos is charming <laughs> as young Kratos. <laughs> I think the beard helps. The beard, yeah. The beard well, at least he's a father now. Yeah, exactly. yeah apparently so. He's responsible now. He's, he's, he's responsible. more responsible. He's like I can't just go be the god of war. I have a kid to take care of. <laughs> Uh, I will say, like, and I have played, I know you guys haven't played this, but, like, as much as, uh, you know, Nathan Drake kind of helps make the Uncharted games, it's clear that the Uncharted games are not special just because of Nathan Drake, no. because this right. game is still um, sensational, and he's not in it really at all. I'm so afraid of it's Sully, right? Sully. Yeah. Uh, Sully. Sully's, Sully. like, my favorite character. And you don't have any Sully either. I know, and, like, but, but, yeah, get, no. but they're, like... Nadine, like Nadine and all, all those other characters, um, great supporting characters, and that's what makes the game. If you just had one kind of cocky lead role and everybody else wasn't very developed, he wouldn't be as likable as he was. So you if you have a ratchet without a clank? Exactly. You can't you just have, have the cocky bastard without the... Exactly. <laughs> Cause, well, because then it, it kind of points out their more negative traits where... Drake is cocky, but Drake is also charming and human, and, and by learning all that story and his backstory, and um, as it gets further developed, you you care more and more about a character, and that's what a really developed character will do. That's why he's so likable and charming. 
Silent Tremor says, how's Corey doing? Well, Corey's not actually running the stream today. Our friend Jeremy is, uh, this is his first time running the stream. You can't see him. He just waved. He just waved. Uh, but I don't know why he waved, because <laughs> you can't see him. Eventually, and he just shrugged. We're going to get a camera over there on, on that side eventually, but uh, Corey's still here in the room making sure that things don't go completely off the rails, but uh, it's Jeremy uh, running the stream. I think Corey's still in the chat, though, just FYI. Um, Oh, he even said this. See, as I as I look a little for, he didn't. Uh, Anastasia twenty four fifty eight says, "I want to become an animator." What's you guys' advice for people that want to become animators or think they want to become an animator? Because um, I know, I know, like Lindsay, you found it kind of just on randomly, but like what's... sure, I, you know, I went to art school and I didn't um, plan on being an animator, but I took classes and it was like one of those kind of oh wow, this is amazing and and I have a bit of a knack for it and um, so I, I went full force towards it but I, I guess I would recommend um, while my broad art school training was very helpful and it was helpful in me kind of discovering what I wanted to do I would recommend if that's something that you know you want to do I would focus really really heavily on it and try to maybe go to an animation specific school for it, like an animation mentor. I, I don't even know what's out there now. I'm yeah. sure there's like a million schools. Um, and I think those are very valuable, whereas um, some people think you need to go to a four year school, but um, focus, all you need is a great demo reel. And so you don't need to worry about um, a specific degree necessarily or what school you went to, or it, it, that's not necessarily what we look at. It's just the work needs to speak for itself. So. Um, when it comes to game animation, you're going to want to have a nice variety of uh, realistic animation, cartoony animation, a lot of body mechanics, when it comes, like walking and weight shifts and um, melee, you know, combat, stuff like that. Um, and then a little bit of performance stuff is great as well. So, you know, just, just focus on the craft and make a great demo reel. I'd agree with that. And also just um, catering your demo reel. Once you have a demo reel, cater that to the the target studio that you want to apply for. Yeah. So if you're working, if you want to work for Disney, you want to do more Disney type animations, or if you work, want to work for Naughty Dog, more realistic animations. And yeah, such. yeah, and that's what was kind of great about applying at Insomniac is we do a little bit of everything. Mm -hmm. So um, I was able to take my former work, which was mainly in film, um, which was only in film, but I, I had done realistic films and I had done cartoony stuff, and so I was able to. I made sure that my demo reel showed all of that, and I, I picked the best shots that catered towards game animation. Um, and, yeah. uh, Skilled HD, thank you for the follow. Um, I think I've talked, uh, you know, over the years, we always get questions about this. How do I get into art? How do I get into animation? And I always, one of my comments to people has always been very um, similar, like, you know, it doesn't really matter, especially in art or in these, like, kind of technical crafts. Um, it doesn't really matter what, like you said, what degree you necessarily have. It matters that you can do the work. So I always tell people, and a lot of times it's not even just going to a school to learn something. It's how much time you put in on the side getting good at it. Yes. Because yeah. I think most people don't just, you know, take their classes and then go party six nights a week during school. Yeah. And it's they spend a lot of time learning and getting good at it. Um, yeah, I've talked about that a lot. Uh, we joke about it. We talk about college sometimes when we're at work and have a conversation or a party. I didn't drink in college. I didn't party. Uh, I was in the lab for about four years animating, and then I, I had some fun after that. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I was very dedicated, and, and all the other people that were in the lab with me late at night after class, um, I, almost all of them ended up having great jobs. And, um, you know, there's, there's definitely some sacrifice to to get where you want to be yeah I, I think it's just like you're you're learning this craft and this skill like you want to focus on learning that as best you can while you have those opportunities because then that opens all the future opportunities once you once you kind of are an animator and you know you're good and you get in and then you can start working on more projects and yeah. being around other good people and having you know people able to mentor you and make you even better at what you do um, that just opens you up and gives you that career that you can use for a long time. Um, so, party after school, guys. Party, yeah, cool. let me be yeah. party a little. Yeah. I mean, yeah. have fun, yeah. enjoy it, yeah. enjoy, enjoy the it. journey. Make yeah. sure you love what you do, and yeah. and, um, and 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 making making 
human connections while you're in school, making friends, and, and those are some of the biggest, those are some of the biggest uh, benefits to you after school is making those connections. Uh oh, um, you know you'll have other friends that may get started in the industry a little sooner than you, and and you may not get to do. Oh gosh. You just have to keep up those, those those relationships and keep up on your work. Absolutely. Yeah, I think that's I think it's one hundred percent true, and it's also one of those things you mentioned. You know, when you're doing something you love, it's not it's not as much it's still work, but it's not as bad when you actually if you really love it, it's not bad to stay in the lab late at night, and it's not bad to keep working on stuff you really love. Especially like if you if you enjoy the journey, yeah, you're going to want to be there. You're going to want to put the work in just out of enjoyment for it. Uh, West Puffin, thank you for the follow. Appreciate that. Everyone that follows on Twitch, like I said, we got a lot of good programming coming your way this week and in future weeks. So thanks for clicking follow and staying up with all the latest. Yeah, it looks good. Yeah. Uh, Danico92 says Naughty Dog and Insomniac are references for any animator in games. Well, thank you. That was my, when I was in college, uh, or maybe just out of college or before, I was playing. Uh, Ratchet and Clank, Tools of Destruction, and it was totally inspirational for me. And I kept that studio. I didn't know of Insomniac, but I saw the name and I said, I'm going to lock that away in my brain for if I ever want to work in games, that's the place I want to work. Like, I was just so impressed. You put it in the vault. Put it in the vault, <laughs> and then I made that dream come true. <laughs> Sorry, my life is an entire Seinfeld reference. <laughs> Uh, Sonic Destroyer says, quick question, you play it on PS4 Pro or normal PS4? This is on PS4 Pro. That said, we do output at 720p for streaming purposes because outputting it more than that is uh, is just difficult to keep it looking great the whole time. What are we seeing? We're seeing 720p, okay. but PS4 Pro, which should actually mean it's like rendering at a higher level and downscaling it so you don't get any you know, downsampling. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it looks great. It looks like, great. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's what you're seeing at home. On a scale of 1 to 10, how hyped are all of you for Last of Us Part 2? Oh, I'm hyped for it. Uh, I'd say 10. I'm saying 10, yeah. No. I'm hyped. Yeah. I tried playing the first one, but I got scared. So yeah. I, I'm not good at playing like scary uh, where things pop out at you and chase you. Like I, I like watching other people play it. So <laughs> what you're saying games. is when that comes out, we're going to put Lindsay in here you're and turn the lights off. Turn the lights <laughs> off, <laughs> and I'm just going to be yeah. like, you'll, it'll be very, very fun to watch me try to play a horror game if anybody... Uh, I, I, I bet we could get an audience for that. Uh, yeah, if you want to see some something funny, just watch me try to play a horror game. I so scared that when I played the um, I don't know where to go. When I played the, uh, there's probably an audio yeah, cue that I'm not getting here. Probably. Yeah, she's. Oh, there you go. Oh, Climb up there. There you go. Um, oh, we gotta boost her up. Um, when I was playing Look Nintendo up, 64. Uh, Mario 64 there's a level where you go into like the haunted carousel land mm -hmm. and there's a room with a piano that snaps at you I, I, can't, I can't even play that <laughs> like I don't like it I just don't like things sh so, coming at me very um, so what you're saying is this month you just go to haunted houses every night in LA Absolutely. I I do not do that <laughs> I will not I will not do that there's, if you guys like I have to tell you like there's some serious ass haunted houses in LA because you have a lot of like VFX and makeup people that really love um, doing haunted houses and they go all out in LA and there's some serious stuff where it's like you feel like you're in a mood like a horror movie because the makeup and the costumes and the sets are so good in these haunted houses it's it's unbelievable I wouldn't know because yeah. <laughs> I refuse to I feel like, oh man so I take it you haven't played Outlast what no no, 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 no. <laughs> I, I do enjoy watching streams of other people that are frightened because um, it's just funny and it's exact like watching people play um, what was that demo um, of the game that never ended up getting made it was like the oh PT PT oh, yeah. oh I, I love watch, I love watching people play PT PT's great but I would never ever ever play it myself I'd be way too scared. Zimi and Math Breeze, thank you for the follows. Appreciate that. Sorry, Jeremy, for leaving your arm up in the air for so long. Uh, if you're just joining us, this is Insomniac Live. Today we're playing Naughty Dogs, The Last of Us Uncharted. I'm here with James Hamm and Lindsay Thompson, who are two of our animators here at Insomniac Game, which makes sense because, you know, Naughty Dog has insane, amazing animation in their games, and Uncharted Lost Legacy is... Uh, no exception to that so um, and we're fairly early in the game we are now kind of 
sneaking our way through a war zone uh, uh, right now. Um, oh, no. No, uh, Lindsay's having to do stealth. <laughs> this doesn't seem very stealth. Yeah, no one would expect someone like you know using a using like a scarf to you, zip line you down. You hear those those bulbs? Not at all. Pop? Silent bulbs. I don't know. In a, with per bulbs. square. There you go. In a world of gunfire and like jet planes flying over, some bulbs true. popping. No one cares. I guess. That's true. No yeah. one cares. Um, let's see. Oh, yeah, okay. That's okay. I know this little trick here. Uh, is this my way up to here? Yep. Yep, push those and then get to make a jump across an alley. Uh, okay, I have a real question. Are you guys inspired by intricate stories from games like Red Dead, Last of Us, and yeah. Uncharted? Uh, and he specifically says for Spider Man, but I think in general, just across the board, we're inspired by stories from games like that. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Just because they're captivating, just it's an immersive movie is what I like to describe as video games where you're watching, you're playing a movie in a sense you get to control yeah. that character's actions and it's just so much more immersive because of that. Yeah. So the more detail to it, the more the backstory and such, it just makes the experience that much grander. Yeah, you so. care more, you're invested. It's, yeah. you know, it's cool. Yeah, I think you saw that even in our E3 demo for, um, for Spider-Man in a lot of ways. We're trying to really, you know, give you that immersive feel of being Spider-Man, so. Definitely is important. Can you? I think you do have to go across to the right and then yeah, maybe climb up the pole. Oh, okay. oh yeah, you're right. Yeah. We know you that. may have to go back up first and then over. Yeah. Oh, damn. Sorry. You got it. Do you ever think about how tired your arms would be? All the time. <laughs> there's some things where, like, you know, there's like leap and like grab on with fingernails oh, on or something. Like, I'd be, I'd just be dead after the first. Uh, wait, is this where I just came from? Oh uh, no, you. No. Just got you. Yeah, you're good. You're good. You want to? Uh, there's a actually there's a cart. I think you want to push off on the other side. Oh, I thought I already. Did. No, no. There's another one. Okay. It's more. It's more cart pushing right there. Oh yes. Okay. Yeah. <coughs> push that. Oh yeah. This is great. This is great. I remember this now. I just push it off here. Uh yeah. Bo Jamming says Luigi's Mansion is too spooky. That's right, it is. <laughs> oh, oh, oh no, oh, I know. Oh, oh, those war torn cities, man. See, the roofs just aren't what they used to be. All right, now what? Walk it off, though. <laughs> yeah, right. There's like, a lot of walking it off when like, I charted. There's a lot of like, yeah. no dust it off. It's all good. Man. I no was like, I, I had taken, I swear, like, you know, you look at some of the falls people take, and I had, so I was in a hotel, um, I'd taken my dog out to, um, Central California for like the weekend, and there was a in a hotel, and she had like moved her bowl at some point, and so I got up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom, and I stepped on her bowl, which like flipped over, and I like completely face planted <laughs> onto this like hard concrete room. And I swear to God, like I probably haven't fallen that hard since <laughs> I was a kid. Like my knee was like totally like rashed and scraped up. Like I got this huge scab, and I, it was just like I was like there was this, you know, a moment where I was like in such pain and agony because it was such a surprise like you see it coming you're in the dark you're half asleep and so seeing people fall like that i was like oh, oh, yeah. oh no that hurts man i had a full-on <laughs> like banana peel slip onto my back once in a parking lot when it was raining oh that took the wind out of me yeah that's so good but in a video game it's cool yeah of course you can survive in a video game uh, Gravy Biscuits, do you guys ever envision making a Fuse sequel? I enjoyed the four-player co-op. Uh, not right now. I mean, you never know. I guess it's possible, but I wouldn't hold your breath uh, anytime soon for Fuse. Um, we were at one point working on, like, some... Oh, oh. Nice. <laughs> Bye-bye. One-handed. <laughs> Damn. That was great. Where, where, uh, where does this take place? Where are we? Oh, we are in... Hi. No, because I feel like it's more war torn than Thailand. Uh, but it's a, is it a fictional. It may be. Um, I can't remember what this where the what this is supposed to technically be. Um, chat, if you remember where this first area is supposed to take place, Corey may be able to look it up on Wikipedia too. I can't remember if this is a real country or fictitious, a fictitious yeah. country, but I don't think it's Thailand. I, I could be wrong. I don't 
I don't know, so anyway. Okay, I guess uh, next snap, real talk. We'll get a little serious here. Uh, with the whole Harvey Weinstein thing in Hollywood and Chris Savino and animation, sexual harassment news, how's the gaming world, how's the gaming dev world treat women? I can answer that. Yeah, I figured you might <laughs> yeah, be able to, Lindsay. It's, it's an in-depth thing. She's I, like, can't, oh, I can't play, can't play on top. All right. um, I will say, I will preface this with uh, Insomniac Games is the only place I've ever worked in games. Um, but I have worked in film and I've worked in this industry in tech for 10 years. Um, and I can say without a doubt that this is the best place I've ever worked um, when it comes to that. And there's obviously been a lot of discussions online lately about sexual harassment and stuff like that and women's experiences, and I certainly have experienced it in my life and in my career. Um, but what I think a huge, a huge important factor to that, there's a lot of things that need to be done, but it's having um, a leadership kind of setting a culture and the culture here is so great and we're so open about these kinds of topics and they're very clear on the fact that there is no tolerance for that and because we're so open about it because everybody knows this is what we want our company to be like this is these are the values we care about there's just no room for it to breed or grow here. And it's not to say that there may not have been a little offenses here or there, or little uncomfortable things, but everything has been taken so, everything, nothing's really happened here, but when there has been a minor issue, they take it so seriously, so immediately, um, that it just, it, it gets squashed right away. And there's just, we have such a wonderful group of people here. I, I have heard horror stories about this industry because it, it is very male dominated and um, but I think I, I think it's just really important that you know leadership is really important in setting setting the tone and we have really really wonderful leadership here so insomniac is is really the top the top place in my career in terms of how comfortable I feel at work so yeah well that's good to hear yeah yeah I think it's like it's something serious and I think it's good to see a lot of awareness of it um, going on. I think, you know, we've always tried to be very cognizant of it, but I think it's good that there's larger discussions happening because yeah. I think awareness is, you know, a huge part of the battle for um, for a lot of things because the more people talk about it and the less people are afraid to talk about it, yeah. uh, the better it can be long term. So. I, yeah, I think the fact that everybody's open to talking about it, I to the point where when we worked on Sunset, nothing specific, but uh, our owner, Ted, came to my desk and asked me and said, we don't have a lot, you know, especially then, we have a lot more now, but we, we, didn't, we don't have a lot of women here. I, I'm curious if there's anything in this game that makes you feel uncomfortable. Because we want to make sure that we're not that company. We don't want to make those games, and we don't want to make alienate people. And, and just to have your leadership come to you and ask, how do you feel about this instead of assuming or you know saying well we're not uncomfortable so we don't care what you think um, that was that was such a telling moment and I was like wow I'm working somewhere really special and it felt amazing to, to be considered and, and I made some suggestions and a few of them actually happened so it's yeah it's it's such a wonderful place to be and, and it's really really important that people listen to women, listen to minorities, listen to, you know, how how they feel about it and consider it and, and make changes. Cool. Uh, let's see. Oh, India. We're in India, by the way. Oh. So, I, I don't know if it's, uh, obviously. I guess the close, I should have known. I, well, I was, I've been half paying attention while I talk and play. And the clothes do make sense. Yeah, think it all makes purposes. sense. I just wasn't. <laughs> But obviously, the much more war-torn yeah. India or, or borderlands of India sort of yeah. uh, situation. Barry Fox says, "Anyone know how many ladies you guys have on the team right now in the company?" I, I don't know. I think it, it, I want to say it's around like between both coasts, like somewhere between thirty and forty, maybe. That I, might be I high. will say that we still have a very um, low traffic bathroom compared to the men. Yeah. So uh, yeah. that's yeah. how you can tell. That's true. That's how the women, uh, us women, can tell when there's more women at the studio is if we encounter another woman in the bathroom. Whereas I know the guys have lines. have lines in their bathroom. Which yeah. hey, look, if we can have one benefit, 
I'll, I'll take it. We have a great. <laughs> We have a private bathroom. I I don't remember why. Ryan was here late one night, and they were cleaning the men's restroom or something, so he used the women's restroom, and he sent me this long text about how there how were seven... Uh, yeah, how glorious it was, <laughs> how it smelled nice, and how there were seven stalls, yeah. and that's not something the men have. Uh, yeah. It's a lot of... Subtitles? Sorry. Oh. Sure. Oh, yeah, sure. We can turn subtitles on. That would help us as well. There we go. Yeah, you're on. I'm all right. Um, yeah, it's gotten, I mean, uh, we've grown. I've been here going on five years, and um, it's definitely grown. There's a lot more women here now than when I started. Um, we, I used to be the only woman on the animation team, and we've got a few now. Um, but, you know, that's always changing. It's always changing. It's always good to see growth and variety. Yeah. So. Yeah, next up says confirm Insomniac Games developing bathroom simulator. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me, you don't want that. <laughs> you do not want to know. There, yeah, men's bathroom. Mm. Oh, oh boy, this is now this. Here we go. This is full. Oh, the controller. Oh, see again with the falls, man. The atmosphere in this game is so cool too. The rain, the, rain, yeah, the, the lighting, like I mean, the lighting's just unreal. Yeah. And then you've got like this, like lightning too. So it's like lightning, yeah. gunfire. Well, I mean, look at like there's stuff ha like there's fires in the background. Yeah, the skybox is nuts. Like just so the whole cool. thing. Yeah. Wait, are you just, you're just supposed to run. Oh, yeah. yeah. This, is a, this is a. This is a. I don't have any guns, so no. Oh, okay, there is yeah. no. I'm not combat. You know, and I half wonder if they didn't really give you a gun to this point solely so that you would run through this sequence. Because, yeah. you know, like if you have a gun, people will try and fight. And so. Yeah. I feel like there's been other games, maybe even ones we've done, where we've taken away your guns to make you run through something. Sure. It's just like, oh, like if you have a gun, you'll try and shoot your way through it. Yeah. Uh, or like give no ammo, just focus, make them focus on. Oh running. my god! Speaking of that, like I remember I played um, a Hitman, one of the Hitmans, one of the more recent ones, mm -hmm. and like I, it was supposed to be a stealth mission, but I had guns and I ended up pulled up in like an apartment, and it was to the point where they were just sending the entire police force to that apartment, <laughs> and I had to, I had to kill like ninety cops. <laughs> And then I think I failed it. Like they, they failed me after. I, I don't know what happened, but I did it wrong. I did not stealthily complete the mission, and they never failed me. So I just <laughs> it was so bad. Yeah, the uh, I, we do need to play some Hitman. Like Hitman is one of my Hitman's, favorite games of the last yeah, few years. Fun. Uh, and like it just ah, it's just terrific. <laughs> if you haven't played the latest Hitman, it's worth every penny. Um, just great game. Uh, skilled HD. Uh, sometimes there's questions we don't answer because we don't have an answer for you. Um, haven't announced anything at this point where we might be next. So. Uh, Gravy Biscuits, did anyone make it to TwitchCon? I did not. We were pretty busy last week. I meant to go on Friday, and then it just was not feasible uh, to go down on Friday last week, Thursday or Friday last week, with uh, stuff going on. So it was uh, a little crazy. Uh, the Salty Yagi, thank you for the follow. Uh, if you're just tuning in now, this is Insomniac Live, our show where Insomniac developers play games that... We make games that other people make, games that we love. Today we're playing Naughty Dog's Jump Across the Way. Uh, behind you, right? right behind you. Oh, so there you yeah. go. Yeah, that wall. Yeah, the, <laughs> usually you go where the lighting is. Wherever That's where I was like, I, I didn't yeah. see any light. That's smart. <laughs> uh, so, uh, this is Insomniac Live. We're playing Naughty Dog's Uncharted The Lost Legacy on PlayStation 4 Pro. I'm here with James Hamm, Lindsay, Lindsay Thompson, two of our animators here at Insomniac Games. They're both working on Spider-Man for PlayStation 4, um, but today we're playing uh, Lost Legacy, which is uh, a terrific game that came out this summer That's on gorgeous. PS4. That's gorgeous. Uh, Captain Arabia, thank you for the follow on Twitch. Uh, we do shows three days a week, so click that follow button, you'll get notified whenever we're streaming. It's usually around 2 p.m. Pacific on Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays.
Uh, Danny Games or Don Games said, were you guys in two separate teams in developing Resistance and Ratchet and Clank on PS3? Uh, no, not really. Usually there was like a team that was working ahead, so there was like a small pre-production team that was working on the next game. Um, so like while we were making Resistance, eventually there was this, uh, like there was people making Deadlocked and Resistance at the same time. And then a few of the deadlock people moved over to start working on Tools of Destruction while most people were finishing Resistance 1. Then everyone flipped over, but a few people stayed to start Resistance 2. Um, so generally speaking, the mass of people were going back and forth between the two, whereas some people would work in advance to basically kind of figure out what the game would be, figure out the size of the game, what the new features would be, so that when everyone rolled onto the game, we were all ready. And that's usually how Insomniac works these days we're in pre-production we have smaller teams that slowly get bigger as we start to figure out what the game is because you can't really like you know we have a huge team on spider-man right now but when you have you know 150 200 people it's very hard to marshal them from day one if you don't know exactly what you're doing so you need a smaller group of people to figure out some of those early questions so that as you get more people they're they're they can be productive and not just like oh what are we doing yeah I would say it's probably like any other like movie or anything like that where like a movie goes through a lot of pre-production where people are figuring stuff out with the script and the production design and all of that yeah, you before. Ra ramp up once, yeah. once you have the work. Otherwise you got a lot of people waiting around for waiting around, tell me what to do. Trying to figure out which <laughs> yeah. to take. Yeah. 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 So it's like figure out those overarching goals and then the whole team comes in and that's also a collaborative process here where a lot of people, you know, there's a lot of... Um, a lot of opportunity for people to kind of shape the big vision, but then long term, people working on all their own stuff too and shaping it from there. Oh, well, Kratos God of War answered the question in the chat as well, so thank you. K Tiger 34 asks, you guys, what are some games you guys like where the animation really stands out? Uncharted. <laughs> well, the obvious. Um, I gosh, I mean, my big go-to is like the Ratchet series. Like, um, I, I actually got to work on Ratchet PS4, which was so much fun. And um, and that anime. I'm trying to think. Uh, there's so many. There's so many cool little indie games. Um, it's, I think I'm blanking. I like God of, God of War stands out for me just because. The animations are creative from a creative aspect um those were always great to me bloodborne was also another one that i really enjoyed just because it was so different for me at the time just say like a cuphead just cuphead, like, cuphead. It's so, cuphead's awesome it's just so cool it's such a it's such a unique cool way to use animation in the game and uh, it just reminds you that as much as we may think we have limitations in gaming you know that we don't we can be really creative with also um Horizon Zero Dawn. Mm, yeah. Was another, have you played that one yet? Uh -huh. Horizon Zero Dawn's another good one. Where it's great animation. That game is amazing. Oh, I, I got hooked. That. I got hooked. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, Lindsay, you should check it out. Okay. Yeah. It's right. awesome. Yeah. It's, it's not really, scary. It's really it's scary. Scary. It might, it might. Well, there's dinosaurs that try to kill you. <laughs> oh, that's fine. Dinosaurs. I can handle that. I'm yeah. trying to think of some I've played recently. There's, I mean, there's a lot these days. Yeah, there's a lot of games. To yeah, the, quali from. the quality, uh, you know, as opposed to coming off a of film, um, I think games more so than film have more room to have innovation. We're going to see bigger, broader jumps in, in game quality and innovation than I think we are in film right now, um, just because it's just such a growing technology and field, and we're being able to put better quality lighting and better quality animation and in something that's interactive rather than something that we pre-render in film and, and takes right. hours and hours and hours so that's why the quality is so much better obviously um, but the leaps and bounds I think we're going to see in games uh, uh, what was that oh, I'll try to think of it but there's just such such interesting things coming out of games I think comparatively to, to film right now but um what about outside of games? What are some of the, your favorite stuff you've seen recently? Um, you know, in film or TV or whatever. Um, I like those little commercials with the little like tubes dancing. Uh, what what it's like for like a cell phone company or something? I don't even know it's what so freaking cute. Is. When I see commercials now, commercials are another spot where I'm just seeing some really fun 
crazy cute animation um, and they're in they're these projects that they probably have like two weeks to, to do but they're so good and so impressive um, and they can take risks because it's just a, a, a 30 second spot it's not an entire film hinging on a on a certain style or technology. I always end up looking at the razor commercials. And like the, like the shit razor commercials. Little dancing yeah. razors or something. Yeah. Uh, you think about that and you go like, or there's a commercial with a little talking foot, like the pose. <laughs> uh, it, what a, it's kind of a fun thing to be able to kind of switch to like these totally different styles and strange things. Like I've animated some weird things in my career. I animated like a cherub rapping uh, like to the no. Jonas Brothers or something. I don't know. You know, when you work in... So cherub rapping to the Jonas Brothers? It was Night at the Museum Dr 2. Right through the waterfall, my it, bad. It was some... Um, uh, yeah, the other one oh, to, the left. to the left. I was going to say, that's... Yeah, that's a rock, but like, that rock. that one I think is hiding. Um, You're going to get a shower, but... Oh, there but... you go. Oh. Yeah, Night at the Museum 2, I had to animate some, some cherubs, former like statues that came to life, and they were rapping a Bee Gees song. Um, you do some weird stuff in animation, and that's where you really can't look up reference. You just kind of have to figure out how a cherub statue would rap. <laughs> Uh, Fritz Kafka, thanks for the follow. Appreciate everyone that clicks that follow button on the Twitch stream. Um, so I, reference is a big thing, right? I see animators always with like mirrors on their desk for facial. I see animators out in the parking lot recording themselves doing wacky stuff. Yeah. Um, how important is it? I ran, I ran a circles for another animator. Just yeah. It's like just run the circles as tight as you can and loosen it up. Just, to see, how that works just to see what the body looks like. Yeah. Uh, reference is important. Uh, in my career, I haven't been able to shoot as much reference for myself as I want because I, I haven't animated too many female characters in my career, actually. Um, but and I somehow get like I, I worked on a Smurfs movie, but I I was really good at Papa Smurf. Like that was my thing. So I only did Papa Smurf in that whole movie. Um, I'm better at like grumpy old men than female characters or something. But I remember I I worked on uh, The Incredible Hulk. And I tried to shoot some reference of me, like hulking out, like, <gasps> and I went down, <laughs> and I showed it to my anim director just to say, like, is this kind of what you want him to do? And he just looks at me, and he's just like, you move like a cat, like <laughs> he's like, you don't, it, this isn't gonna work. Like I can't use it as reference because the weight of it would never work. And luckily, we had this great guy who was kind of stocky and muscular, and he would shoot our reference for us because he was sort of built like the Hulk. Um, I think he ended up getting a credit on the movie because he did everyone's reference. Um, but it's really important. It's so great to be able to kind of see the timing of when, how people move, and the weight. And that's the weight is some of the hardest stuff to get, so reference is very helpful. Okay. Yeah. It seems like it. It seems like that's like one of those things where it's like it's easy to like animate how you think it looks, but it's really hard to animate how it how it actually look, look right. How it should look and what it feels like. Like, yeah. like it, shows, um, it feels like it has the right physics or like the proportionality is correct or. Yeah, uh, a lot of animation is is feel. Is does yes. that feel right? Does it feel um, right? And even for games, it's different just because you have to correlate it with the button press. So if it doesn't hit fast enough, yeah, you know, or if it jump fast enough, it doesn't feel right. Yeah, yeah. timing and. Saber0307 and J419. Thank you both for the follow. Really appreciate that. Thanks for watching. And uh, we're here playing Uncharted the Lost Legacy, talking with the chat, anything. Uh, on PS3, oh, I guess he, PS3 Ratchet and Clank, but let's, we can even talk about PS4 Ratchet and Clank. We're still doing hand animation. There's not like yeah. mocap. That's all. I, I keyframed every single thing in Ratchet PS4 uh, that I worked on, and it was a blast. Hey, can you explain keyframing just for people that maybe don't know what that term means? James. Uh, keyframing is basically not using any motion capture at all. It's you figuring out how, where the body should be, you figuring out the timing of it, use your reference so you might record yourself, but you're doing it all from hand. Oh, gosh. Driving. And so then you're basically <laughs> responsible for every you're movement and every single frame. Every single movement, every little finger that moves, the elbows, the fingers again. Oh, I am a bad driver. Hint. Oh, I Insta love it when they give you a hint. Drive up the muddy hill using the driver. Dry rocks for trick. Okay. 
Lindsay instantly has regret when she realizes she has to drive the Jeep. Like, gosh, <laughs> why did I take like, the oh, controller back? Like what was, what was I thinking? <laughs> well, why? There's actually this whole big area in this game that's like this giant, like chapter five is like this giant open area where you drive around and you can drive between all these different really? little setups and uh, track all this stuff down. And you probably can spend... I think I probably spent like a couple hours in this yeah. one like big yeah. open area. Um, I, will, I will say in the Uncharted games, it's the driving mission sometimes that I get totally lost in because it <laughs> feels like this big open world. And yeah. I start doing circles and I'm like, there's got to be Madagascar something huge. I don't see. I think it was in Madagascar. Madagascar was I was just yeah. like, where'd it go? Like Italian looking. I'm wanting to be more informed. It's all about that map usage. Yeah. Oh, really? there's maps? Uh, there, <laughs> yeah, there is actually a, this a, the area. It's so big, like there's maps and there's like circles as you check everything off. It like puts X's on all the stuff you've seen. Well, uh, which is handy. Yeah, that'll My favorite is that when she opens the map up, it's like this tiny little touch. Kotaku even did a whole story about it, where like she opens the map up and the map is like annotated. The the gameplay map that you see her open before it zooms in is annotated correctly. Wow. So like it actually changes the asset that. Um, she pulls up. It's L2 rad. L two and uh, R three. Oh, there we go. L three and then R three so you can mark them. Is it? Right. Sure, it's. I think L it's L. L3. No, it's, it's L three. Yeah. Did I say R? Yeah, you said R. But probably shouldn't. Have that. Well, you looks like you're a pretty good shot from this distance. So I'll okay. go for the sniper though. Oh, sniper! <laughs> Hold on, I gotta get my health back. No, they're everywhere. Shouldn't have taken the controller back. <laughs> I could do this. I could do this very embarrassing, like embarrassment-free at my at my house while no one's watching. <laughs> it's tougher for an audience when you're talking and yeah. Come learn, on, learn that come on. Spooderman PS4. Thank you for the follow. Hmm. I wonder where that name came from. Now that the real question is. Is that a fan of ours who's just signing up for Twitch for the first time? Oh, oh, no. Or is that an employee here who's messing with us? Could be messing with us. That's the other thing. We do have that in the chat sometimes because you guys don't, may not always realize it. Oh, there was ammo right there. Yeah. I don't know if you got it. There you there go. There we go. But there are sometimes Insomniac employees chatting amongst you and you may all not even realize it. Oh. Uh, I don't know if we have auto aim on. We definitely we, we're playing we do. it. Oh, we do have auto aim on. I desperately need it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, true gamers. <laughs> <laughs> we're trying to get as far as we can yeah, today we're, we're in an speed hour, running. hour we're speed fifteen. Running. So you know. Hey, we we didn't set it on like explorer mode. Explorer mode. mode. We're, we're on, just on light. We're on light. Yeah. It's like um. I don't know what that is. What is the equivalent to light over explore? Mm. Easy. Uh, easy? Easy is? and So there's super, super easy, easy, and then there's easy? Yeah. yeah. We're, We're on easy. easy. We didn't go to We're super easy. easy. So. Oh, what? I think I do easy at home. I'm not yeah. super easy. But... Nice Why body. is it ammo? Oh, there we go. There you go. Now you got a, now you got a rifle. There we go. All right. Oh, no. Where is it from? There's one up there to your left. Nice. I'm behind you two, right? Yep. No. Out left. And Hold on. There you go. Sorry guys, I'm this is I'm no I'm worries. usually playing this alone. <laughs> Do you feel pressure? Fritz got them. <laughs> Insomniac employees don't have time to chat. Well not usually but like sometimes there'll be someone in there, you know, it's their favorite game too. We had a bunch of we had some people who were watching the Super Metroid stream. You never know. Oh 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 man. Yeah. I would have probably gone for the fist kill there myself. Same. But oh, same. Well, no, no, you're fine. You, you were you were very effective. Yeah. So don't don't apologize. <laughs> There's just something satisfying about. Uh, this when it gets close, yeah, it's just yeah, like you're getting close. It's not my favorite. Like if you're when you have uh, when you're above ground on them, and you can jump down and punch them. Oh, I like uh, cr cr yeah. yeah, yeah. Or blow up the tanks. Yeah, yeah. Those, are those are always yeah. fun. Do you need? Do you have to go back and get the jeep now? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I think this, this seems like forward progression. Oh, good! I put my gun away. Does that mean it's over? 
Yep, yeah, you, you, did, you did kill them all. <laughs> Maybe. You did. You Maybe. Got through it. It's over for now. It's over for now. Oh, I see. You're oh, getting it open. She'll bring the car. Open. Yeah, there you go. Oh, Chloe. Okay, okay, yeah, so she's going to get the car. She's going to go get the car. You're set on that front. That's good game design. Send the NPC to go get the car. Yeah. While I do the fun stuff. While you open the okay. gate. While you're not looking, NPC can teleport away. Mm -hmm. She got to that car pretty fast. She yeah. did. She did get back very fast. Found a way up really pretty fast and everything. And now she's she turned down. Oh, there's the car. Isn't that beautiful? I love it. I love it. Uh, if you're just joining us, this is uh, Insomniac Live. We're here playing Uncharted The Lost Legacy from Naughty Dog today. I'm here with two of our animators. Uh, this is James Hamm and Lindsay Thompson and we're talking animation and video games and Naughty Dog and all sorts of cool stuff um, so click the follow button if you haven't ever watched us on Twitch before we do streams three days a week with different insomniacs different games um, and also jump in the chat ask us your questions we're always happy to talk to you guys out there you're making fun of us for using auto aim today but it's okay we're, we're getting as far as we can the magic of off of Barry Fox, this is the magic of off-screen animation. Poof, the needed object and character is right there. Yep. There you go. It's, it's an animator's best friend. It yep. is. Okay. Yep, don't even need to show it. Just <laughs> bam. Oh, yeah, see, this is the big yeah, open yes. area. Like, you have this oh huge God. open I think area. I saw, I saw, um... James, you jump in. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, quick on the map. Let me see this whole map business that I've yeah. been ignoring. Yep. I've probably... Ne I'm not sure the other games had a map like they this They probably no, do. No. no, they probably do. I don't think so. They did, I didn't know about it. Yeah, so like you can see, like there's the big town tower in the middle that you have yeah. to go to first, but then there's all these other like buildings yeah. and the maps. But it, it marks the lower off, left. Like, where you yeah, can. so it starts marking off. Eventually, like like when you go to that first building, it'll put a bunch of markings on the map for things you need to explore, and then it'll cross them out as you uh, go. So cool. it's actually that's help that's very helpful. Cell phone? Yeah, well, that's where it stores Just your photos. Yeah. Okay. Like there's no signal out here, but you know, you gotta have the cell phone. So, it's her only camera. I saw a video of a guy that uh made this whole landscape out of fruit and vegetables. It what? Was crazy, yes. What? I think it was I think it was on this Naughty Dog channel on uh, YouTube or Sony channel. I'll have to go look that up. That's yeah. crazy. Okay. Sean Noonan, thank you for the follow. I the idea of making it so what do you make the towers out of? Are those like zucchinis or something? I think so or carrots or something. I don't know. It was it was great. Wow. Like it was a it was a full like two, three minutes of me watching it being impressed and then wondering why I watched it. But oh, it was great. but that's the internet. Yeah, but it was it's great. Watching something for two or three minutes like, oh, is fun and impressive, and then you go, why did I spend two or three minutes watching yeah. it? <laughs> well, just think, you spend two to three minutes watching it, but someone spent hours, hours. tracking down that's all the days, vegetables. Days that's very true. That's very true. I feel like it would take so long, the vegetables would rot. Yeah, they'd have to, do, they'd have to make a plan, like in styrofoam, oh and, then, and then put it together no. in a day. That's crazy. In a cold room. <laughs> yeah, I, I got this walk-in cooler just for this project. <laughs> Or maybe if you live somewhere cold enough, you can oh. just do it in your backyard. Yeah. I assume that, like, I guess some of the some some vegetables like potatoes and what? zucchini don't go bad for like yeah. months, right? Like they Tomatoes just grow in the ground. Tomatoes yeah. because carrots are okay for a while. Yeah, uh -huh. I mean, like it grows in the ground, so it's not like yeah, they're not refrigerated. Right. Is this the right tower? I think so. Put your mouth. Oh yeah, you're at the right tower. Okay, we're good. Got here fast, man. I don't I know need what I'm supposed to do here, but I'm here. Uh, I think you need to climb it. As, as as like oh, okay. anything in Uncharted, when in doubt, climb. Climb, yeah. Now. yeah. Uh, gravy biscuits. I need a ratchet and clank statue in my life. Do we have an online merch shop? We don't have a merch shop. Uh, there was one in here, but it's temporarily um, uh, relocated because we're doing a ratchet and clank 15th anniversary art show in Los Angeles next month at Gallery Nucleus. It's November 11th. Please come out and join us if you're in the area or. Uh, if you want in general. Um, but uh, some of our cool swag that was in this room uh, has been moved there temporarily to be showcased for the art show. So it'll be back. Um, that statue though that was in here, it's first for figures I think, or maybe it's Gaming Heads. I, mean, I think they're the same company and they have different names to de so that they can deal with different licensors. Um, but I think it's the same guys that run both to be honest. Uh, anyway. You may be able to find that statue online at GamingHeads.com, or if you look around, some stores may have copies of it. I don't know, but uh, it does exist. Yeah, There's also go up there. There you go. Yeah. There's also some older ratchet yeah, statues that are employees only that you can occasionally find on uh, eBay. 
uh, as ex-employees or people that were, you know, worked at Sony or were given them as journalists or whatever, uh, sell their excess ones. Kratos got a war. Do you think one year development for this game for a game is pretty short for a game like this? Um, one year. For yeah, this? For, yeah, yeah. I think they. Uncharted. How long is this game? Well, it was, it was Six, seven, eight hours. Yeah, in it was that supposed ballpark? to be DLC, and then I guess they got, they got carried away. So. Yeah, it's, yeah. That how hurt. long is a regular Uncharted game? Is this uh, is this still fifteen, sixteen so hours? So this is about half half yeah. of an Uncharted. Yeah, game. I would say it doesn't have quite the. I would say like it's almost like I would. I wouldn't call it quite half of an Uncharted game because it feels like the Uncharted games are maybe a little bit bigger and like this does some clever things like a couple hours are in this big open space they made like they did a really nice job of reusing the space but overall yeah. um, there's a fair chunk of content. I think like we've gotten carried away making DLC type stuff before too. I think the big thing, so it doesn't seem too long to me, I think the big thing is just like when you've been making a game or a series for a number of years people start to get really good at making the content for that series. Yeah. Um, and so, not to say that there isn't a ton of work or effort put into this, but like, you know, it comes along a lot faster um, than you would think it would. Like they can make content much more quickly than you would imagine because they know what they're doing. Like they've made a bunch of Uncharted games. Um, so it doesn't seem too fast. I mean, it seems like, you know, wow, they got a lot done in a year, really. It, it's great. Demon I ninety one, thank you for the follow. Really appreciate that. Yeah, so you open these doors and yeah, I was gonna say, you know, with a game like this, it, and I would never uh, discount the huge amount of work that I know went into this. But you've tested a lot of kind of uh, mechanics and and uh, ways of doing certain things, so that. <laughs> You're not completely developing an entirely new game, so something like this might be a little quicker than developing a new game. Like even even working on Ratchet, you know, we, we've done Ratchets in the past, so we have an idea of who those characters are and all this stuff, so we're not having to test as much. What do we want Ratchet to move like, or what do we want him to do, so you can kind of get through some stuff a little bit faster. Yeah, I think a lot of games you know, we're going to play Sunset on Wednesday and play some of the DLC. Like, even I remember just when we got to Sunset Overdrive's DLC, it was like, we finally actually kind of knew what we were doing when we were making the DLC. Like, it was that, oh yeah, now we know what this is. And so that stuff came along really fast. And I think the DLC, the two DLCs for Sunset Overdrive were probably the best missions in the game just because it was built on all the knowledge of the game. That's why you always see a lot of, like, even think about Uncharted 1 to Uncharted 2 is another great example, or Ratchet 1 to Ratchet 2. There's these giant leaps a lot of times because you finally, by the end of the first game you're developing, you figure out what, what you're actually doing, and then you spend the whole second game kind of actually knowing what's going on. Um, Ooh, go to the question mark. Yeah. yeah, you do want to go to the question mark because it's going to unlock a bunch more opportunities. Juan Pisu, so you're saying new Ratchet in a year. I'm not saying that. <laughs> what I was saying, I mean, actually in the last Ratchet didn't take, we didn't spend that long on... Uh, on it overall, it was maybe a little over a year total yeah. for PS4. So again, like we can crank that out. That also helped because we were remaking a game, so you had a lot of um, yeah, lot to go off. Yep. Oh. The reference. Yep. Yeah, like I remember playing the very first one. I still have the very first one. <laughs> PS2 case and all. Nice. Poster. <laughs> the whole nine yards. Yep. KA stat 37. Thank you for the follow. Uh, Kaz Tet. Kaz Tet. I don't know. <laughs> you can tell us in the chat how it's supposed to be pronounced. Um, yeah, someone asked what their J four one nine will be. There be a spinoff of Drake's daughter in the future. I don't know. That's Naughty Dog. Spoilers. He has a daughter. Yeah. I haven't gotten to that point. Oh, well. <laughs> it's okay. It's Uncharted Four. More. That yeah, that is pretty late. in Uncharted Four. Wow. Well. No, well. It's the very end. <laughs> Where's that middle? I, I think I'm. I think I'm close to the end. I. I'm actually. I feel like if there, you hit a certain point, you. It's okay if you get a little spoiler here and there. Yeah, I don't feel like that spoils the biggest parts of Uncharted. No. Honestly, no, no, no. Like, I do love these ammo cases that you yes. unlock. Like, 
with that have like really good weapons in them. It's just always nice to get the gold power weapons in a Uncharted game that just kill someone in one shot or yeah. blow stuff up. Uh, someone asked what program they make. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Naughty Dog uses their own engine, and they have a team, a tech team there that is like tech in general for Sony first party PlayStation games. Uh, that's not necessarily directly part of Naughty Dog, but it works at Naughty Dog. And uh, those guys do a lot of the. I think it's Ice. I want to say it's Ice. And um, they help uh, lots of first party teams. Yeah, behind you is where you want to go in. Yeah. yeah. It's actually pretty cool. There's some cool. Okay, like there's some cool wildlife in here. That's all I'll say. I don't want to spoil it. Horizon Zero Dawn, you could kill a wildlife. It was great. <laughs> you like hunt? I always feel bad. You even could, hunting a digital. I, I feel bad, but I, I feel bad when I hunt a digital deer or. Well, what's that game? Uh, there's a new one coming out. Uh, it's where you're pretty much in an open world and you're hunting and you're killing and. Um, no, Red Dead? No, not Red well, Dead. Well, Red um, Dead, I think you can hunt in Red Dead, too. It's the one, it's a big, it's a big game. <laughs> <laughs> I'm forgetting, oh gosh. Uh, it's the, the new one is about like a, like a religious cult. Oh, uh, are you talking Metro? No, no. not Metro. Uh, Detroit? No, not Detroit, which looks interesting to me, though. Chad, if you know. Religious cult. Uh, it, it's it's yeah. You're like there's a religious cult that's come to a town in America, and and you're it's this big open world game. <laughs> I'm just blanking. Yeah, I know, I'm Far Cry. Far Cry. Far Cry. Oh. Far Cry. Yeah. Far Cry. You yeah. do a lot of hunting Far in Far Cry. Five. Yeah. yeah. Far Cry. You're right. It is Far Cry Five. Yep. That's. That is 100% true. So yeah, you, this oh, is like I where you get to put the tokens points. in and they pop up from the map. And so now if you uh, look at the map, I think she should have, uh, yep, so now she's marked all the coins. So again, you can spend a lot of time just in this big space, like hunting down each coin and then also Wait, that, each, is that Is that not part of the main story? Or? No, you can skip the coins entirely if you want. Yeah. It's just for the special treasure, yeah. which... Um, like if, if I was at home playing this, I would, I would take this. I would probably yeah. do it too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's uh, a, yeah. it only That's took me it took me like an hour to catch yeah. all the coins. It's not that. It's not that bad. But it was like one of those things where I'd done all the other towers first, and like I'd done two of the towers, and I got there. I was like, oh, now I gotta drive back around everywhere. Why didn't I go there first? What was yeah. I thinking? Yeah. But I do like the monkeys. The so monkeys are great. Monkeys, There's monkeys, monkeys across the uh, across the way. There's monkeys all oh. over this like yeah. skull See temple. Yeah. Oh yeah. And they're like playing with each other and I stuff. I can't bring my guns out, so I can't zoom in. Oh yeah, don't, I'm glad they don't let you take your guns out with them. I was shoot just, no, I was just shoot shoot zoom in. I just wanted I to use the scope. More. Oh, that's funny. That's cool. Somebody had fun in a. Uh, oh yeah, someone enjoyed that. <laughs> see. I wonder though if those are mocap equipment. It's hard to tell. Like it could be some guys in a suit Looks playing like around and they that would, that was probably it. a fun mocap day. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Play like a monkey. Okay. Yeah. Ka stats is how long do you guys conjure ideas before prototyping in the studio? Monkeys on the car. What? Oh, that's cool. Um, we we typically prototype right away. We'll 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 get an idea of a feature or something we need or a vignette or whatever, and um, we'll try to prototype as soon as possible and get it in game. Mm -hmm. See if it works. Yeah, it See works. if it works, and then we'll move forward from there so we don't kind of fully develop an idea and then put it in the game and realize it doesn't work. Um, you know, we don't want to polish something really pretty and then have to change it. So we'll, we'll prototype pretty quickly and pretty, pretty uh, crudely. Just to see if it works. Yeah, it's a lot better to try something actually in the game than it is to like think about it because it's just easier to put it in. Easier to see the problems we put it in, easier yeah. to see what's fun about it. Because then you start to see, oh, okay, well, if the character walks up from this direction, is that is our concept going to work? Or if we need to do this? And you can just see it in, you know, three dimensions and, and just see what, what will work or what won't. Plus, that way you can go also get feedback, whether it's just being an idea. Yeah. Once you put it in the game, everyone gets have hands on like mm, if it works or not so mm -hmm. definitely helps out where am I going I think you are now at one of the coins we were talking about a so, so what's the forward progression yeah so the okay. way to forwardly progress is to get all the three big ones whereas the coins are all sort of side things oh, okay oh okay. Um, but so if you the, the so just just get the big ones yeah you could just go to the big ones so if like you want we're not going to be able to get through all of them in the remaining time anyway <laughs> 
but the coins each have their own little puzzle to them uh, as well. Let's just go to the big one. Which is, should be pretty close, actually, from where you're at right now, the first big one. I remember when I was watching Uncharted 4, I spent time going around the Jeep and jumping in from different directions. Uh, just to get all yeah. the different animations. Just to see that it, all the animations they created to do it, and that's something definitely working in games now. Um, playing games, playing games now uh, is so different for me now that I develop because you just you look at it differently. Some of the big one. It's to your right, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. Yeah. Um, you just look at it differently and you start thinking, you're like, oh, that's cool. Like, how many different animations did they create? What were the boundaries of that to get her in that car? Did they need to make five or did they make three and kind of yep. blend them? And you just start thinking about that stuff. And, and not even not even just for the main character now that we have, like, side Oh, I love, I, do it too. I get them to get out of the car. I mean, yep. I love just watching their reactions to yep. different things. And I, it's, I, love, I love their reactions when I hit stuff in here. Yeah, just the the and when the they stop, place. like it's it's so great. It's is this not where? Yeah, I see you went past it. So oh, I'm going to the tower. Uh, okay. you were going to the big like either the, yeah, the, the three big lanterns said. basically. Yeah, the three lanterns. Oh, okay. Yeah. You kept saying coins. I was like, oh, this that's the biggest coin on the map. <laughs> oh, sorry. Yeah, no, the big okay, lanterns, no, the big ones, the lanterns. I should be more specific than saying just the big ones. <laughs> I remember I had to do a few animations for Sam getting in the boat when he when they oh, get yeah. out of the boat and stuff. Uh -huh. I was doing a few for uh, the different sides he comes in. Yeah, where you go, where you go, right in there. I, it's uh, it's really cool. It's really cool to see. Um, uh, so prototypes for animations. Yeah. When I saw those, all on like the block level, block mesh levels. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We'll we'll do we'll do. To the point where sometimes you, you want to get something in so quickly, you'll put a pose on something and you'll get it in the game. Yep. Or, you know, it could be anywhere from that to actually finding a little animation that might work for it, just to, that, that might be similar. Yeah, just to sell the idea. Yeah, so any, anything that it needs, you, you take it as far yeah. as it needs to go to sell the idea. Sometimes that is just a pose, sometimes you need more. Like let's say jumping in the car, you you you'd probably do a few poses of her jumping into the car from different directions, get those different animations in, make sure it's working mechanically within the game, and then from there you'll go okay, well now we're gonna go shoot some data that looks really good and clean, and then we'll replace those clips yeah. in the game. Danico ninety two asks, what do you guys think of Death Stranding? I hope you're gonna need the car for that. Uh, and I'm looking forward to it. I, I, I'm just curious, I guess. Um, I've, I've never uh, played a Kojima game. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I've heard of, of kind of how odd they can be, um, yeah. which I actually, I'm not opposed to, I kind of like. Yeah. Um, and I, I have a feeling I'm, I'm going to enjoy maybe watching some streams of that, and I don't know if I... I'll have to see what the game is. I'm, I guess I'm still not sure what the game is. I mean, I don't know if many people are sure what the game is at yeah. this point. It's still very fresh and kind yeah. of unknown. Yeah. Um, I like Norman yeah. Reedus. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, after after the cancellation of PT, then I saw that come. I was like, well... I have to say, I was really kind of... Ex as much as I don't like scary games, I was excited about the idea of PT with Guillermo del Toro and Norman Reedus and Kojima, and it, it sounded so interesting. Um but yeah, I, I, I'll be very curious to see. Yeah, it's a, uh, it's one of those games where it's like, you know, it's it's already so weird that it's just, you yeah, accept I'm, it I'm very, I'm actually curious to see what Kojima does now that you know he's not really bound to like the whole yeah. Metal Gear mythology, because yeah. I don't get me wrong, I like love Metal Gear Solid. Um, he's, the, he's the David Lynch of video games, which I'm a huge Lynch fan, so. <laughs> so so you're, this is perfect. It yeah. might, I might be into it. I might be really into it. Yeah, I'm very curious. Again, that was awesome. Yep, another awesome animation. Louis zero four eight. Thanks for the follow. You ready? Appreciate everyone who clicks the follow button. Driving's done. Yeah, you're like okay, we're done with the driving. Here, let's uh, play the shooty I'm part. Bevy of play the shooty thugs. part. I hope it's a puzzle. I mm. I would love to do. That. He's like, mm. <laughs> good luck with that. Well, we 
can all have wishes. All right. <laughs> but sometimes. Okay. Here we go. You guys are just going to keep handing me the, the controller with the gun, and I'm going to keep making a fool of myself. Oh, no. Oh, that was just me. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Sorry. See, I would never survive. You're just the, I oh, oh, I shot. My... Oh, no, I threw a grenade. Oh, gosh. I would just blow myself up. Uh, do you have to dive? Yeah, you have to go underwater. Um, dive down and under. I think you can hold your breath forever. No, can you? No, I don't there's gotta so. be limits. Like, I was playing Uncharted 4 over the weekend, and I dove, and I was just like, oh, shit. how long can I be under here? And I don't remember seeing a time no. constraint I, on it. I, do, I mean, I do think you sort of have, like, a superhuman amount of time. Oh, of course, yeah. But it's, uh, it's definitely not unlimited. I'm pretty sure you could drown. Yeah, I think it'll start to go red. Yeah. Um, oh my gosh, what am I looking for? Spooderman. A, a, you're asking what we think Uncharted, or Sucker Punch's next game is. A, so, A, if we knew, we could, wouldn't tell you. And B, if we even had an idea, we wouldn't give you what the idea was. So, I don't know. Uh, I have no idea. I'm sure it'll be cool, because I really like Sucker Punch's games, and uh, Infamous is great. So, oh, I don't know. Are you Stay tuned. underwater? What's happening here? Why am I getting my gun out? Uh, probably because you're about to have a guy <laughs> shooting at you. Oh, maybe not. Well, that nope. ah. Actually, One Piece is like they know. I have no idea what uh, Sucker Punch's next game is. Those. No one has. I, I they don't tell us stuff like that. You'd be surprised how secretive... Well, no, you should all know how secretive the game industry is, but people don't like to tip their hats. No one wants to be the one that gets in trouble. Oof, no. No, you do not. So. Enjoy the mystery. So, yeah, You'll you press out. jump and hold mm -hmm. square. Yeah. So, there you go. Uh, cool. God, get hard on the wrist. Yeah, come on. There's, climbing. So, there's so little mystery left in this world. Enjoy the anticipation. Yeah. It's like, I, I know a lot of people who don't watch the trailers for, like, Star Wars or their new movies because they want Is it, they want that mystery. They want to go in with, with wonder and... Did you guys watch the new Star Wars trailer? <sighs> I haven't. I have not. Are you, so you're intentionally not watching yeah. it? Yeah. I think I did. I'm not one of those what the people. Because the director, <laughs> said, the director came out and said, don't watch it, didn't he? No, well, he kind That's of said, heard. someone said, if I'm being a purist about this. And I, so and I actually, so there's a great time. We were, we were at Comic-Con for like a crack in time, and I somehow ended up at the Avatar party, uh, and I got to talk to Jim Cameron for like 45 minutes mm -hmm. with a group of other people. It was That's great. Cool. One of the greatest nights of Comic-Con ever. And uh, I think you have to go up, and maybe you just have to drop. I feel like you have to go up. Maybe right? it's a drop because it doesn't seem like there's anywhere to go. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I asked them like, so I haven't seen anything yet. Should I? I should I? Uh, should I watch the trailer when it comes out and stuff, or should I just stay pure? And he's like, and he put his hand on my shoulder. He's like, you're a purist. I like that. He's like, Don't watch a single frame. So like, commercials <laughs> would come on like all the time for Avatar, and I'd be like, blah blah blah, I'd cover my eyes. And he was like, I was in the movie theater once. The trailer, I was like closing my eyes. Like, just uh, tell me when it's over. Um, but I'm the same way. Anyway. Yeah. My point being, Ryan Johnson said something like, "If you want to be a purist, yeah, don't watch it." But he's okay. like, he's like, my point is, you you could watch the trailer, and it definitely has some kind of spoilery stuff. But I feel like that movie's two and a half hours long, and we've seen about four minutes of it. Yeah. Oh, so, no. oh, oh gosh. Oh. I'm you need to get somewhere where you can shoot back. Yeah. I'm in a bad position. Yeah, in I've the water, in... not so good. Oh, yeah. oh you can actually shoot you in the water. Shoot. That's nice. Nice. Okay. Two down. Um, chat, do you guys have you guys watched the Star Wars trailer? Are any of you guys that are being too purist in the chat? And while I also say that, let us know what you think. Uh, if you have a final question, get it in now. We're gonna wrap up in just a couple minutes. Uh, these two folks have to get back to working on Spider-Man. Uh, I have a Ratchet and Clank art book to go finish. Uh, so, you know. Oh no. 
Yeah, now you definitely have to, you have to. Get, oh, if you, yeah, oh, you probably have to get out. You probably can't actually use the, the. I bet you can't use the. Oh god! No, no, oh god! Oh god! There it is again. <laughs> there you go. The switch for Yeah, now you switch. Now you're good. <laughs> Isn't this entertaining, guys? <laughs> uh, Denico ninety two. In terms of hype for Spider Man, like we're just busy working on it. Like, don't worry. We're we've got it. We're we're just yeah. working. We're Let just us. Working. Well, let's work on it. We'll show things when the time's right to show things. We are we are professionals. <laughs> this is what we do for a living. Yeah, we, we so make we and and uh, market video games. Uh, so don't you worry, never fear. If you're like, oh, some Barry Foxes says he waited. He didn't want to see the trailer. Zemi says he watched it. Uh, Anastasia says they put too many spoilers in trailers nowadays. That's, true. That's That's true. I feel like the big trailers usually aren't the problem. It's like the TV commercials are where all the spoilers really start hitting these days. Yeah. yeah. Um, Anastasia, we will play another Ratchet and Clank game soon. Maybe next week. Maybe in a couple weeks. Not exactly sure. We'll let you guys know um, when we do. Oh, Barry Foxes, your girl. Sorry, my bad. What? It's hard to oh. tell. Barry Fox. I don't know. You could be a boy fox, Barry girl with fox. An a or B? <laughs> oh my. B e r r y. So like you know, like the raspberry strawberry. foxes, yeah, strawberry yeah. foxes. I mean, like I I guess I should have guessed yeah, that, but you know, it's all there. Um, okay, we do have to see the death trap. This is like this is where we'll close after these death traps because this is too good. You guys have to check these parts out because wow. I'm gonna enjoy. Spoiler, now we know that. Well, look, there's a giant statue <laughs> with a, like a huge blade. Oh, okay, and so, oh, decoration. You're, so you're sending me through this thing. Yeah, 100% right. sending you through this thing. So the key to this, and this is the training one, ah. is that every time you step on one, oh, yeah. and, and then there. they drop down. So you can't, you have to time the jumps correctly and like backtrack slightly if that makes sense. Yeah, can I just send uh Nadine? Oh whoops. Can't Nadine, Nadine your turn. Girl. Help me out. Uh are either of you guys on Twitter anywhere that people can find you? There was a question uh, that's asked. If not, no biggie. You can always find Insomniac and Insomniac Games. I'm James Stevenson on Twitter. Um I am I am Jham underscore animation. Okay, go back. Okay, now go. There you go. Now go to your left. There you go. You got it. Oh, he's gonna kill me. Nope. Oh, so good. those gold ones indicate where it's gonna get swiped. Oh, the gold. okay. That way you kind of have a hint. Nice. All right. I have a feeling a real death trap would not be so merciful. But, <laughs> yeah. You know. It wouldn't video. set you up to, to win. Oh, and we get to close on this nice, beautiful vista. That's, yeah. There we go. That's really nice. Let's take a picture. Let me take a selfie. Cool. Well, James and Lindsay, thanks for coming on the stream. Everyone uh, watching at home, thanks for coming on. Sajid Broski, yes, we all are working on Spider-Man for PlayStation 4. Thanks to Naughty Dog for uh, letting us play Uncharted Lost Legacy. Uh, they sent me this code a long time ago, so thank you, Arnie, and everyone over there. And thanks for the shout-out today on Twitter, sending people over to watch. Uh, if you're looking for more Twitch streams from Insania, click that follow button. We'll be back on Wednesday playing some Sunset Overdrive. Uh, I don't even remember Rob Rise of the Robots DLC. What is Robot Factory in my head? So, Rise of the Dawn of the Fallen Machines. Right? Rise of the Dawn <laughs> of the Fallen Machines. Is that what it actually ended up being yeah. in the end? Like this is some giant Transformers oh, parody. Yeah, but of course Brandon came up with it. Brandon's the final boss. Brandon's going to be here uh, while we play it. And then on uh, Friday we're going to be playing the brand new Super Mario Odyssey on Nintendo Switch, uh, which will be a lot of fun as well. So we'll see you on Wednesday, 2 p.m. Pacific. Thanks for watching today.